Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Cowboy Muhammad with Premier Leather Crafters again, right here with another video for you. Um, sitting here working on a piece, and I thought it would be a prime, very prime opportunity to get off into uh, leather tattooing, as is now termed. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing as leather carving, but it's just a little bit more detailed. Um, as leather carving, not as many bold cuts, not as many, you know, uh, it's basically more work with your modeling tool, uh, which makes it a little bit more detailed, a little more fine. You have several modeling tools out here, um, as well as um, um, a lot of different tools as far as artistry is concerned, your artistry work is concerned. Um I'm just giving you, sharing with you guys what I've learned over the years from um, people who have taught me different crafts along the way. A lot of you guys have saw a lot of the videos I've done, pretty much uh, a, a few of the videos where I talked about my uncle, uh, my father, as well as uh, a guy by the name of Chance Chancellor, who was um, with Tandy for several years, uh, has taught me a lot. One thing I do know, back in the days, you know, my uncle and my father taught me a lot about making a lot of bold cuts, a lot of cuts primarily with the the square knife or your square um, swivel knife, which is here, but I have my guide attached to it. But if you can see that, that square blade right there, uh, doing a lot of work with that. Then when I started really getting serious about the craft and learning how to do more artistic work, I was convinced to buying this little jewel here, the angled swivel. Great piece. Um, basically, you'll carry it like this with your finger, your index finger in the cradle, and you'll be able to turn it and maneuver more with getting into tight areas with just your thumb and your middle finger. You see how that works, especially what we when we're doing pieces like what we're doing today actually this is our beautiful new piece that we're working on now and you can tell a lot of the cuts some of them are not as close but when you get up into the ribbon it's a real tight turn and especially when you're working up into the hair portion around the face and the eyes you want to be able to you want to be able to get in there and really move that knife so you can get a good even flow, even cut, and really be able to, with the square, with your more broader, bolder uh, swivel knife, you can't really make those tight turns and adjustments. And I was at the leather class at Tandy in Birmingham when I was taking these, and again, Chance had this in his toolbox. And I was like, I got to get one of those. And the class he was giving us was about carving. And I was like, oh man, I know how to carve. And he was like, well, you might want to get this one here because you can really get up in there in the tight turns. So, and this is what we've been working on today. But what I want to show you guys about the modeling tool, every line in your picture or in your artwork does not require it to be cut. And let me give you a prime example of that. Like in the hair here, only you only want to cut the bold lines in your in your picture. As you can see here. See those bold hair lines into the hair and around the braid? Those are the only ones you want to cut. But it's the illusion in leather tattooing that you want to focus the eyeball on or the, the, the eye. When people see this, they, you don't want it to be just so, you know, blocky and bulky with a knife cut. So what we do, we're going to come back and take our modeling tool. And those fine lines, we're not going to cut the braid itself. We're just going to mold that leather back a little bit. And we're going to just push it back and concentrate more on the illusion that is cut, but it's not cut. 
And that's what we want to do because every line in your artwork doesn't need to be cut as it was taught to me. But you do want to bring the eye to the attention. You want to bring it to the attention of the eye of the, of the person looking at it to make it look like it's been cut. And I'll show you guys exactly what I mean as I'm doing this now. And we're going to take different ends on the spoon and we're going to flip it and turn it just to get up in those tight places. I encourage any crafter, you need this tool in your toolbox. This is a perfect little jewel, man. And it does a multitude of different skills or different jobs. It does a multitude of different jobs. And we're just pushing these lines back, pushing the leather back around those lines to make it appear that it's been cut, but it's not cut. Sometimes in some pieces that I do, I only cut the exterior part of the artwork around the outside. That's the part that I really want you to focus on. That's a bold cut or a deep cut. And that's to make that 3D effect of your artwork comes up, come off the leather. And then we'll take whatever backgrounding tool or matting tool or uh, um, yeah, backgrounding or matting. Um, take either one of those tools to really cause that separation into the work that's because you want the eye to be drawn to the work itself and that's what we'll only cut that outside line to make it 3d or come come to the the illusion of the focal point of the eye even around the jawline you really don't want to take a matting tool or a background tool that just and then it makes that jaw like pops way out there as you can see like in the video there are only certain parts of my feature that are highlighted, you know, around the video, but like into the creases in my cheekbones. You don't want to cut these as in into an artwork piece. So we'll take our modeling tool and we'll just, uh, same way as if you're doing on your face. We're just going to mat that down a little bit just to sh show the, the slight curvature of the crease in there even around the nose you don't want to cut around the nose because the eye can tell it's a nose that's there but you just want to basically round that off a little bit not cut it but just mold it back a little bit especially around the eye most artists whether you're a tattoo artist uh, a pencil artist a painter the eyes are the hardest the ears are the hardest making sure that it manipulates the person who looking at it making sure that it manipulates their vision so it can really just be a subtle and not so square and blocky you know that's what we want to do so here it is guys i'm going to show you where i am so far and i hope that this helps you a little bit uh oh here we go right here uh, we're going to take our background and tool and we're going to just separate, show you the difference when you're talking about sep full separation as opposed to just molding it back a little bit. Because what we want to do is really draw attention to the centerpiece of the artwork. That's this is what separates a leather carver from a leather tattooer or a leather tattoo artist. That's more politically correct. I'm sorry about that. I'm from the South. We just say it how it is. Y'all know what I mean, you know, but here we go. This is what we're working on. Both cuts around the outside and we use the backgrounding tool around that. But we've taken our modeling tool and modeled, just molded all around the breast area. We don't want to show like some Dolly Partons, but we want to just show a nice slight curvature of the breast, breast area around there. Just as the artist depicted into the picture. 
and especially around the ruffle area here and then around the jawline this is all done with the modeling tool we're going to separate those earring the earring right there and then we're going to focus on the mouth the nose and the eyes and then now I did do a slight separation with a background and tool around the part for the hat meets the head because even in our picture you can see there's a separation from the hat and the head and it's a slight separation from the jawline and especially around the breast area around the cleavage right there we're just going to model that back we're going to take a modeling tool and just push that leather back just to show a slight that rounding portion of it and it just makes the piece look more realistic so and you guys can see that here we're just going to take that and just make a slide molding around the cleavage and around that area and we put that nice jugular vein right back there as it is in the picture because she has her head turned and so we have to put all of that back into the picture so you guys can see um make it, it it's just manipulating the eye and again i'm just giving you what i've been taught over the years and really starting to craft even the braids oh man i wish you guys can see those braids can you really see that we just took the modeling tool and just cut the different strands in there not not even really cutting but you can see that in the dry portion right there or as the leather is not even dyed or stained but when we get ready to antique this thing is really the antique is going to go down into the where we took our modeling tool into the hairline into the hair strands and it's going to accent every portion or every part of this artwork that we just molded back modeled back i don't know if you're going to call that modeling or molding but it is a modeling tool so this is exactly what we're going to do and it actually works in conjunction with your antique gel, whatever type of gel you're using. Once again, family, I hope that you guys got some use out of this. Uh, practice. Play around with it. Don't be afraid of artwork. Uh, you can, if you're blessed enough to be a, a artist or you can draw real good, perfect. You know, you can do it right on, on uh, I would encourage you to get some uh, cellophane or tracing paper. You can buy this all day long at Tandy or any leather supply place. And if, if you're blessed enough to draw, you can draw right onto your tracing film. Or if you're uh, looking for some more eccentric pieces that you really want, uh, depending on whatever your clientele is, um, you can download, copy, download, print, and then use the, the tracing film the same way over top of this. And just you can all, always, uh, the lines I had just to make sure it's centered onto my, my piece that I'm working on. But I hope that this helped you guys. Uh, come back and see me anytime. PremierLeatherCrafters.com. Send me any of your questions. Um, uh, even your critiques, you know, hey, I mean, I'm, I'm not the best craftsman in the world. You can't tell me that. But, you know, it's always new information and new things that's out there uh, for us to share and network with each other. This is Robert Muhammad, the Leather Cowboy, right here at Premier Leather Crafters, doing what I do. Grind it till you find it. Peace.